buttons. Hi, hi guys. Hi, thanks for tuning in today on IonFX. Okay, let's just give the rest of the attendees um, some time to come in before I start the session. Hi guys, can you hear me and see me clearly? Let me know in the comment section. Hi Oma, hi Emerson. Okay, that's great. Okay, thanks for tuning in nice and early today. Okay. Um, today's session will be about taking profits and taking profits and stop losses placement. All right, it's a quite, quite an interesting topic that we are talking about on IronFX today. Let's just give the rest uh, two more minutes uh, to come in before I start. So let me know where you guys are tuning in from and what time is it over at your site, right? It's a Wednesday. I should be downstairs drinking somewhere instead of hosting the session. <laughs> okay, Manila. Turkey, nice. Right. South Africa. Hi, Kenneth. Hi, hi Jose. 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 Oh, Kenneth is from Philippines. Okay, Namibia. Mike. Just give me a second. Um, shoot. Right. Okay. Okay. Maybe I should start the session. Okay. Us. Uh, Amaya is from Colombia. Okay. Okay. Thank you guys for tuning in. Right on today's session on trade management, take profit and stop loss placement. So I'm sure every one of us who are trading will want to know where are a good, where's a good point to take your profit and where's a good point to uh, take your stop loss, right? Because most of the time we know that um, sometimes, it, sometimes it happens because, you know, um, it hits our stop loss and then flies to our take profit. So it's slightly... Um, a bit more frustrating when that happens. So in this session, I'm hoping that um, I can explain some of the, the, the uh, methods that we use to place uh, take profit levels and stop loss, stop loss levels as well, right? To make, to more, to redefine or to define um, more specifically where you should put them so that you can take better profits, okay? So uh, today on INFX, before we start, the information in this webinar should not be considered investment advice or an investment rec recommendation, but instead educational material only. And before I start, right, uh, maybe let me just bring you guys to, let me do a short introduction on a, some important websites that you guys should know, right, before I start the webinar. So on IronFX itself, if let's say you tune in later today and you miss out some parts of um, this session, you can go to our webinars, right? And uh, you can go to, wait, let me see. Hmm. I think you should be here. Okay, you should go to the webinar site. Uh, it usually should be, yeah, give me one second. Um, okay, we do record our uh, webinars and our podcast on the page itself. Um, so you can come in to see all the past webinars that we have recorded. Okay, past webinars. Click here. If you miss any of the webinars and you want to have a refresher course, 
Right. So if you want to listen to any of our English uh, webinars, click on the English and then you have all the past webinars that we have recorded here. Right. Um, like our live trading session, our fundamental analysis, uh, previous sessions on the Fibonacci. If you want to, if you want to take a look, yeah, it's all here. Okay. And I want to as well as tell you guys about our special VIP room, right? Especially for all the IronFX clients that we have. So in this VIP room, you have exclusive market forecasts. Okay, we will be posting some of our uh, analysis from our prop traders as well as uh, Desmond himself, right? So you can ask our experts anytime. I will show you guys um, how it works later on. So this is just a page to um, bring you through and uh, as well as let you know where to register, right? So you can let us know what currency pairs or uh, if you have any questions, we'll be live um, to answer, right? We'll be there to answer you, okay? So there are different premium services, um, different five tailored account types for you to choose from. So if you are already a member of um, the IronFX, you just have to deposit um, the sum to get you to different tailored account types, right? Okay, so you just click on this link here, access our VIP room. I'll paste the link here. Right, uh, let me just paste the link here for everyone to see. Okay, just click on that link and you should be able to um, sign up. Okay. Okay, so this is how the VIP portal looks like, right? You have a section where you can chit chat with us, with, with, with us if let's say you have some questions about maybe um, different currency pairs or where are some of our key levels or where we should be um, looking at, right? Chit chat, okay? And every day we will have news that we post, updated news or daily news, important news that we post here, okay, the majors, your DXY, your Euro, your USD pairs, commodities, indices, um, crypto even. Yeah, so any currency pairs that you need, it will be here as reflected. So how do we actually use this uh, VIP portal? So for example, we are looking at uh, Euro USD, right? So, okay, just give um, the chart a minute to load, okay? So it will be this chart that you see, and then there will be uh, all the tools that you require. For example, your Fibonacci, you can draw, um, and then you can type here, okay. Um, hi, Annabelle, um, is that an uh, important reversal point? For example, if you're looking at, um, a, okay, for example, if you're looking at this level here, let's see. Okay, so for example, if you're asking whether this is a key reversal area at the 38.2%, you can highlight, right, and link to this line, confirm, and you enter. So every time you post a question, we'll be able to see right here where exactly you're talking about, right? So you can toggle around, let us know if you have any questions about uh, any currency pairs, right? It's very useful, it's very tailored service. Um, so yeah, check it out, okay? And um, okay, so that's all before um, I start the session. So let's, without further, further ado, let's just um, start the session, okay? So that's me, I work for the Everest Fortune Group, right? which run the award-winning research firm finalists for best FX research, 2019-2020-2021, and the finalists for best equity research, 2020-2021. Okay, so the agenda for today, we'll be talking about why stop loss and take profits are important. Why is it important to set both of them? Okay, both, are, both of them are as important, right? Your stop loss as well as your um, take profit levels, right? Why they are important. Okay, the anatomy of a trade, okay, it's not only just about your entry, it's not only about your stop loss and placement. There are other factors as well 
affecting the trade, right? Fixed stop loss and take profits. Why are they not that ideal? Okay, dynamic take profit and stop loss placement. So we'll be teaching you how to make it a more dynamic uh, way of placing your take profit and stop loss, right? Risk allocation. Why is the ideal lot size or why is an ideal percentage to set aside? Right. This will be covered during today's session. So before I start, uh, just to let you guys know, if you have any question, please feel free to post um, on the comment section because I can see, I can see exactly, wait, uh, yep, I can see exactly um, on my left side of the screen, right? So if you have any question, just let me know. Okay. So why is it important to place um, stop loss and take profit? So uh, maybe I ask the audience um, a question. So do you guys actually place stop loss and take profit levels or you just let the trade run on its own? So you can be honest because most times I have seen people who just enter a trade because they feel like, you know, um, they, they feel like their guts tell them or maybe some of the support key resistance level tell them that it's going in a certain direction, but they have never actually thought of um, how much profit or how much stop loss they should put in every trade. So how many of guys, how, how many of you guys um, actually play stop loss and take profit levels? Let me know. Uh, Joy Kim, Joy Kim, what about beginners? Uh, yeah, actually for... Even for beginners, it is a good habit to put all, all stop loss and take profit levels. It's important, right? I have uh, some answers. I use them. Uh, it's important. I, hit, so sometimes <laughs> I put, but mostly it hits stop loss. I mean, that happens to most of us, but you still have to put because it's about risk management, right, Dipesh? Okay. So the reason why um, you have to put your stop loss and take profit levels is because number one of risk management, right? Um, managing stop loss and take profit help you to manage your trades more strategically, right? Instead of more, more emotional kind of trade, right? You, you strategize your trades, like um, how much stop loss and how much take profit is worth the time and, um, and effort or worth that risk for you to take. So risk management, what I mean by that is how to properly identify these values are important because you, you need to know, um, identify your favorable opportunities and uh, come to term or accept the level of risk that comes with it. So with proper use of stop loss and take profit levels can play a crucial role in preserving and growing, growing your portfolio, right? Not only are you like systematically protecting your holdings by prioritizing less risky trades, but you also prevent your portfolio from being wiped out completely. Okay, so that's why I mean by you can identify and analyze properly before you enter a trade, right? Instead of just enter and then you think about your stop loss later. Okay, number two, prevent emotional trading. So some of us, um, you know, when you trade, you get slightly more emotional. So when you have stop loss and take profit levels, it's sort of like your um, boundaries, a set of discipline, right? To, to prevent yourself from getting the account wiped out, right? Because a lot of us, um, we trade because of impulse or on impulse. So this is, uh, this is why some traders rely on a preset strategy to avoid trading under, trading under stress, or fear or greed, right? Because these are very powerful emotions. So you do not want to um, impulse trade. Hence, you set your stop loss and take profit levels accordingly. And the last point, which is the most important point, right? It is very important to know whether your risk to reward is uh, rational or whether your, I mean, it's, it's logical to calculate your risk to reward. It can't be, you can't be risking a hundred dollar just to win a ten dollar trade, right? It is it just doesn't make sense. Okay, so your risk to reward has to be rational, okay, before you even take a trade at all. Hence the importance of stop loss and take profit levels. Um, 
Okay. So some of the methods uh, used to calculate stop loss and take profit levels. Number one, uh, trend lines and support resistance levels. So support and resistance are core concepts familiar to any technical traders or any traders at all. These are the areas where price chart are more likely to experience increased trading activities because you know as prices come to your support or your resistance these are the key areas where most of the trading activity will happen right this is where the fight always happens okay so be it buying or selling hence traders who use this method typically set their take profit level just above the support level and stop loss right below the resistance level if right below the resistance level they have identified okay so if you are taking profit you should take slightly lower because you don't want to come here when prices come here they will fight and it's very um, messy you don't want to miss up like maybe 80 percent of your take of your profit already so usually for take profit wise we will set it slightly lower and if it's a stop loss you want to set it uh, slightly below because you want to have some buffer okay percentage method okay this is useful as well so instead of a pre-specified level calculated using technical indicators some traders actually use a fixed percentage to determine their stop loss and take profit so for example if um, you want to close a position um, at maybe five percent of your five percent gain or five percent loss so it's depending on um what is your rr what's your ratio of your risk to reward right how much you want to take okay this is quite straightforward and the last point would be moving averages and other indicators so some traders they monitor moving average closely looking out for opportunities to buy or sell buy or sell presented in a crossover signal for example like your um, rsi or your macd right so they'll set a percentage or uh, an amount of uh, pips, like maybe uh, 10 pips, um, take profit or stop loss. Okay, so these are some methods um, that traders use. <clears throat> uh, for Omar, what is the recommended RR rate? Uh, I will come to that later. Okay, for, for different people, I mean, there are different reasons for different, different um, RR rate. Okay, so the anatomy of a trade. Okay, so a lot, like I've mentioned before, most of us, we actually enter a trade. When we do an entry, we forget all about our stop loss and take profit. Because, for example, if I see a, a market moving in a ascending trend line, I will be very um, nervous or I will be, I want to catch the wave, right? So I will just enter without thinking. I will just enter right here or maybe here. It's a good level. It, there's a breakout and I... I urgently need to enter. I just enter a trade without thinking of what is my stop loss and what is my take profit just because I want to be part of this action, correct? Uh, that is very risky, okay? So we check off all the boxes. Uh, for example, our Ichimoku, we check off our trend lines, our breakout levels, but stop loss and take profit comes only after execution most of the time. So all this take profit and entry take profit stop loss are all as important okay so anatomy of trade there is entry stop loss take profit not only this three there is also your break even your break even point your partial profit right your idea invalidation and cancel trade these are all as important uh, consideration. Oops. So the anatomy of trade includes all this, not just an entry only, right? So the rest of this um, will be covered in the re rest of the webinars following um, trade management part two, three, four, right? Okay, so remember, it's not only just entry, stop loss and take profit, okay? all are as important okay so now let's talk about um how we um, take profit and place stop loss in the most simple manner most logical and simple manner okay so usually when a trend comes along 
right? There will be, you will have to add in, identify your major resistance area and your major um, support area, correct? And these levels here are called the what? Magnetic. They are the magnetic areas because prices tend to be very attracted to them. Okay. So for example, when your price is moving up, should your should your take profit be exactly at the line here? Should your take profit be here? Or should your take profit? Okay, let me just draw. Should your take profit be A or should your take profit be B? Can't see my chart. Are you guys looking at my chart? I'm not. Let me know in the comments if you guys can see what I'm sharing. Can you guys see here? Okay. Okay, then maybe Terrence, um, there's something wrong with your screen because, yeah. Okay. Okay, so let me know whether your take profit should be at A or should it be at B? If let's say my trend is going this way, my, my trade is this way. Okay, I can see some answers. There are some A's, there are some B's, but the answer is none because... <laughs> Because if you are looking at taking profits, right, what you should be doing actually is point C. Yes, it should be before A, correct. Okay, because once it hits this level, there will be a lot of commotion going on, all the fighting, all the um yeah, all the fights will be happening here. So usually I just wanna avoid that. I will take my 90%. And run off, right? Just leave the 10%, it's okay. Because you do not want a point to happen where just because for the 10%, you wait for price to almost reach there, reverse, here you panic. You don't know whether you want to sell or you want to hold, correct? And then you hold, thinking that it will come back, bounce back, but nope, it went back down 50%, gone. So instead of taking 90, you take 50%. Okay, so usually take profit levels should be below the resistance or magnetic area. And for your stop loss, it should be slightly um, after. Okay, because you want to have some buffer. All right. Okay. So what's um some problem with um fixed stop loss and take profit? Anyone else? So you know some channels they tell you that uh if your moving averages cross, you can actually place a trade to take um, 100, okay, let's say 10. 10 pips above and then place your stop loss 10 pips below. Okay, any idea why this is not the best or um, not the most ideal um, way of taking profit and placing stop loss? Okay, the reason why it's not good although it's a disciplined way of um, taking profit and placing stop loss, it's not ideal because like I've mentioned, most times prices will react to a certain point and reverse. So you don't want to be caught in a situation where you are like maybe at a nine pips and then you are very rigid or um, you just want to hit the full 10 pips and then it reverses, you panic, right? You don't want to be caught in a situation here. So, that's the problem with your stop loss, um, fixed stop loss and take profit levels. Okay. So one, um, let's go to some examples. Okay. So this is the support level here that we are looking at because you have two points. Okay. So this kind of looks like a double bottom, right? So prices are always very attracted to key levels before a bounce off. Okay, so number one, nice support level here, nice. Okay, so here, because there's a breakout, we buy thinking that price will go up all the way. Okay, strategy has a fixed stop loss of 100 pips, which is all the way down here. Okay, this is my stop loss, which is right above. Okay, and then instead of going up, my price came down, touch my 
stop loss, right? Because it's 100 pips, what? Right? Because my mentor told me it has to be 100 pips. So I fix to 100 pips. Okay, so I stick to it. But it's tap out, hit my stop loss. And then it reverse in a direction. Actually, there's another slide that shows that it flew back to my take profit levels. Okay, so my point here being, since you know that, your prices are always very attracted to your key magnetic levels or key levels, you should always place your stop loss slightly below these key levels to give it a buffer, right? So prices actually touch here and flew back to my take profit. Okay. Take profit should be also slightly below because you don't want to wait until you hit the important level and then the fight begins, okay? You don't want to be caught in a crossfire. Okay. So in essence, when prices goes near the resistance, you should take profit before any commotion happen. This is the red zone. Okay. And then if you're coming back down where your stop loss is, you always give some buffer instead of placing it exactly at the crossfire area. Okay, it doesn't make sense. Okay, so another example. So here is clearly a strong resistance area where price has reacted off twice. As you can see here, bounce off once, bounce off twice. So if let's say you have a fix 100 pips, which like I've mentioned, your mentor or someone actually tell you, you should set it to this because of your simple moving average crossing, whatever it is. And then you stick to your 100 pips, which is here, take profit. Your price actually bounced off. This is what you get originally, 90%. 90 percent profit. But instead of this small gap here that you are waiting for it to touch, hoping that you'll come here for the 10%, you actually miss the whole trade, right? So point being, always place, take profits below, slightly below the key resistance area, okay? So if you place your take profit slightly before the key resistance level, you would have been in a 90% take profit trade. Right. So lesson here is don't blindly follow a fixed um, take profit target just because some foreign told you to. Um, although I think it's good discipline to set a fixed um, take profit and stop loss, but you should also act according to what the charts or what the market is actually reflecting to you, right? You don't want to be rigidly sticking to your 100% or 100 pips um, take profit, okay? So take profit placements the wrong way. Now here, here is the swing high, previous swing high, which is a major key resistance level, okay? Bought and have a long position this way, okay? Price reverse before the big resistance here. So if you would have set your take profit slightly lower, you would have made maybe a 99%, okay? Always place your take profit before key resistance and support, right? Okay. Oh, so this is the this is the same example as I have done before, right? Nice support level. You think your price will go up, um, and then the stop loss is here. Hit your stop loss and fly up. So this is the same exact um example that I have done before. Okay, what I mean by dynamic um take profit placement, so. Maybe you guys can share with me how you take 
what are some of the methods you actually do your take profit levels? How, how do you place where, where you do your, where you take profit? Like, do you go by your um, risk to reward? Do you go by a ratio? And often, do you actually change your take, take profit levels? Do you adjust them? Let me know in the comment section. Okay, yeah, it's very common for um for people to use the risk to reward. What what are your risk to rewards then? I'm I'm curious. So some people risk to reward will be one to two, but um usually that is quite hard to achieve. So unless you are uh, scalpers, usually I don't think they will they they might use the one to two because price fluctuates too fast. Okay, risk to reward and next psychological level. Mm, that's interesting. A one to one. One to one could work for scalpers. Okay, so what I mean by dynamic take profit placement. Okay, let's see. So as some of you have learned, um, the Fib in this section, I will just use Fibonacci as an easier way to explain what I mean by dynamic take profit. Okay, so right here in the chart, we can see Okay, the entry level. So if you are looking at a short position, your entry is here. Your stop loss is placed here, right? So we enter a position. Here. Okay, prices actually came down. Right, came down here. This is our um, buy right, a take profit level that we are looking at. But let's say um, prices actually, once you draw your, this is a, let me see. Okay, this is a 78.6% retracement because they draw here, right? So this is a retracement level, okay? Oh, okay, wait, wait, sorry. Let me re-explain this. Okay, I think what they meant here is Okay, so my Fibonacci is drawn here, correct? And then I'm looking to enter a position once it hits my Fibonacci level here because usually price tends to reverse at um, these levels of retracement. So I'm waiting for an entry before the short position and my take profit being placed here. So point one, my stop loss should be placed above um, the highest, slightly above or below the highest or the lowest point, right? depending on whether you're long or short, okay? So you always need to have some buffer, okay, for your stop loss. And then point two, if your stop loss, uh, if your take profit level is here, Maybe you want to take slightly before instead of exactly at the point because uh, John cannot see my drawings. Can the rest of you see my drawings? Okay. Okay. I think John, something wrong uh, with your... Yeah. Okay. So for take profit level, you always want to avoid the key key resistance or support area, okay, you always want to take before, okay, but for stop loss, you always have to, it has to always be placed after because you need the buffer. So for take profit here, just now like I've mentioned, I have entered a trade here because it has hit my 78.6 uh, feet level and now my short entry is, is in. So what what I'm trying to say here, um, in, in a sense of a dynamic take profit, is that if you draw a projection, or if you draw, um, okay, usually we use Fibonacci projection to project where prices might come to, correct? So if let's say you draw a projection here, and then it tells you that, hey, um, actually at a 78.6 projection level, there might be a reversal, okay? So it aligns with your 
take profit before a key level, right? Because you do not want to be here. And just coincidentally, your projection tells you that you should take here. Yeah, then you should actually move your uh, take profit slightly above. Okay, so my, my Fibonacci projection actually tells me to take profit here instead of here. Okay, let's see what happens. It hits exactly here at my 78.6 and does a reverse to my stop loss. Okay, so um, my point being, you can use other indicators um, to actually incorporate it to your take profit levels to make it more dynamic, right? Instead of just looking at um, support and resistance level. So I, I think Fibonacci is a good way, is a good tool to use to incorporate together with your together with your um, take profit and stop loss levels because you know it is a moving forward or it's a forward looking um, tool instead of lagging right lagging tool because you have project things like projection that can let you know in advance maybe price um, might reach here right so this is how I incorporate how we incorporate our Fibonacci to place a more dynamic take profit or stop loss. Okay. So stop loss, same thing. Okay, right here, entry, stop loss. I'm waiting for price to actually... Hmm. Okay, my entry is here. And then I'm looking to take profit here. My stop loss is placed above. It is what we're looking for. So I entered a position. Okay, and you can see here, my Fibonacci expansion is telling me that, hey, um, your stop loss shouldn't be placed, um, shouldn't be placed so close to your previous swing high, correct? So it would... What this does, what this Fibonacci does is that it helps you to define or helps you to further support and give you a more accurate place of where you should place your stop loss. So my Fibonacci tells me that, hey, my expansion, my negative 27.2% is actually slightly above where I placed previously, right? So I actually moved my stop loss. Right further, and you can see that hey, it actually came here and then touch before it hits my take profit. Okay, so there are two ways one is for your take profit level, and one is a dynamic way to place your stop loss. Okay, I will draw this again in case it's not very clear. Okay, so what I can see here is that. I entered a trade. Okay, I'm going to enter a trade once it hits here. All right. Okay, hit my entry level. Now my question will be, where I sh where should I put my stop loss? Most people will think that stop loss should be placed here at your previous high. But what this webinar is telling you is that you should always have a buffer. But how much buffer? So this is where your Fibonacci or your other indicators come in to tell you, this is my expansion. It's telling me that, hey, my negative 27 is somewhere along this line, okay? The price tends to like to reverse off this area, okay? Because this is a key level. And my 61.8% projection, okay? So here. Yeah, my projection might be this, okay? So my project, my fit projection might be this. And then my... Expansion is here, 27 and 61.8 projection. So this is a very key important area that prices might come to touch before it reverse. And what you should do is always place it above the important levels. Hence, you can see that the line, your stop loss is placed slightly above your 27.2% um, expansion and 61.8 projection. So price actually really came here to touch before it bounced off, okay? 
So this is how you actually make your stop loss more defined, more accurate, the exact points, instead of just saying that, hey, your stop loss should be placed maybe five pips or one pip above your um, key support or key resistance area. There are times where um, your fit might not work, but it's good to give it a shot, you know, to try to spot all these important uh, key levels before a reversal. Okay. Okay, now, uh, let us talk about risk allocation. So just now, someone actually asked me um, what is the ideal RRI, risk to reward. Maybe you, you guys can let me know what is your ideal percentage per trade for risk allocation. Do you guys risk 1%, 2%, 10, 20, 50, all in? Yeah, I see some answers, 2%, 1%, well, 10%, that's quite a lot. Okay, it also depends on how much uh, your pot is la, relative to, to the percentage, right? If it's like a 10,000 or like 100,000, 10% is actually a lot, okay? Okay, uh, 2%, 1%, okay. Very commonly, people will risk about, I would say, this level here. Okay, so Oma is, is a high risk taker. High risk, high reward, I hope. Okay. So what I want to show you guys here is roulette. So all of you guys have um, used or played rather um, roulette, right? So there's 18 red, 18 black, and one green. So if I am if I give you one thousand dollars now to actually bet on the roulette, how much will you put on a black win? Will you guys put all in the thousand dollars, or would you risk um uh how how much would you put if you are given a one thousand dollars, but you can only play one hand? Will you all in? Would you put two hundred dollars, hundred dollars? Okay, hundred dollars, so about ten percent. Okay, we have some other answers, right? But typically, most people will be in a range of um, yeah, hundred to two hundred. Okay, all in, yeah, because it's not your money, right? <coughs> okay, my point being, <coughs> my point being. If let's say I change the roulette table, right, to 32 black, now would you change your amount that you put? Will you guys change it to all in? Or will you guys actually, there's a highly likely, <clears throat> there's a higher chance that you, yes, that you might put in more than your original, be it double or triple or more. My whole point, my whole point is that most people will put in more if, they know that there is a higher possibility of black winning, correct? Because instead of 18 now, I have 32. Your odds are higher. <clears throat> higher odds. Correct? <clears throat> so my point is, um, risk allocation often depends on what is the setup like? So if you have a very, very good setup with maybe your FIP levels, uh, FIP confluence, there's a very good <coughs> Fibonacci confluence. Your uh, RSI is telling you that, hey, um, there's a divergence or your stochastic is showing you um, that it's oversold or overbought. Okay, all this, if let's say, the setup is really good. FIP confluence will give you 30%. RSI give you 30%. Your stochastic or other oscillators tell you another 30%. This gives you a 90% odds of winning. So if I have a high higher odds of winning, why would I not put in more, right? It's all depending on what is the setup. Like most of the time, we are waiting for a good setup before we, do, before we place a trade, okay? So risk allocation, um, in our opinion, is best, um, best gauge if there is a good setup on that particular trade, okay? So the higher 
or the better the setup, the more we allocate a risk. Okay. Okay, so the last part to this uh, webinar will be ideal lot sizes. Okay, <clears throat> so it's the, always depending on your account size. Okay, how, how many percent you are willing to risk because it will affect the lot size that you trade often. Okay, so for example, if 50 pips stop loss, this is 50 pips, right? Stop loss. Point one lot, you lose $50. One lot, you actually lose $500. So it's always depending, you should always know how much you are willing to risk before you adjust accordingly. So I have, um, let's say if you guys do not know how to count, you can come to this page. Uh, okay, for example, okay, I have uh, calculated here. Depending on which currency pair, if you're not sure, you can use this because our MT4, you have to state exactly um, how much or how many how much how many lot sizes you are you wanna you wanna place. So on a ten thousand dollars account, if you are willing to risk um one okay, one percent, your stop loss 30 pips. So you are risking a hundred dollar and this is the standard lot size. Okay, so if you do not know how to count your lot sizes, you can come here. Okay, if you are risking two, oh, Oh, okay, 2%, then it's a different lot size. So it's depending on what is the risk percentage or what is the amount you are willing to take. Um, <clears throat> what's your risk allocation before they show you the standard lot size, okay? Okay, so in this example, a 50 pip stop loss, but okay, it's here, okay. So 50 pip stop loss, 90 pip take profit and 20 pip stop loss, 36 pip take profit. So which one do I make more? Let me know in the comment section. Can you all see? 90, take, 90%, uh, 90 pip take profit, 50 pip stop loss. Which one do I make more? This versus this. Let me do a quick calculation also. Okay, so which one do I make more? This one looks like it's a lot more actually, right? Based on based on the looks of it. Okay, I have some answers. Okay, the top, the bottom. Okay, okay. So actually. Okay, you do not need to know the lot size because you just need to take your 90 versus uh, 90 divided by 50 versus 36, your profit divided by your stop loss. So both give you a ratio of 1.8 to 1.8. Okay, so my point being, um, my point is, it's not about the amount of pips you make, correct? It's also depending on the lot size. That's why you ask. Um, but it's not always depending on the number of pips that you actually made. I can make a thousand pips, but actually my my lot size is 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 a uh, very big or very small. It affects your your take profit, like the actual amount. Okay, so it's about the risk to reward of your trade. Okay, that's my point here. Okay, so I have came, I've come to the end of um, today's session, right? Uh, do you guys have any questions for me? Okay, maybe I can go to some live chats actually. Wait, give me one second. Let's just see. Okay, okay, let's try. Maybe on a live chat. Hmm. So maybe on the live chat, I can do uh, some examples. <clears throat> okay, let's do maybe you go. Okay, maybe you go. Okay, so for example, if you were to, 
obviously we have to identify a trend, right? It's going downward. Okay, usually people will want to. Okay, most people will. Let's say if, let's say if I come to this area here and it's in a downward descending trend, most likely I will want to place a sell, sell order, right? A sell entry here on the second touch. Okay, so let's say if we already entered here, where would your stop loss be? Let's say this is my short entry, my sell entry. Um, let me know in the comment, where would you, let's say if I'm placing a sell entry here, where would you actually place your stop loss? Would it be here? Would that be your stop loss? at this tip here, or would your stop loss be here? Right, remember, we always mention, if you, are, if you are placing a stop loss, it should always be away from your entry. Okay, slightly above the previous resistance, uh, neither. Okay, if it's neither, where would you, where would, where would be ideal to place your stop loss in your opinion? Okay, some people use pips, some people use percentages. Yes, you can actually do that. So let's try to see whether there are any confluence zone. Okay. Okay, so for example, you can see here, right? I draw my Fibonacci uh, retracement tool. And it's telling me that, hey, my, there will be a reversal maybe at this level, which is actually quite an important key level because it's the overlapping uh, resistance, right? Because there are so many levels that came here, touch, wait, point one, two, three, four, five, six then break. So this is actually a very important level that we should look out for, which also is the 50% retracement level. So it means that if price were to come back, it might touch here before, before a, <coughs> it might touch here before um, it bounce off, correct? So what you want to do is, if this is such a key level, your stop loss should be placed slightly above. Okay, because you do not want to be in the commotion or in the fight zone. So I will place my stop loss slightly above the 50% retracement. Okay, as well as the overlapping support or resistance. Okay. So then, this is just for example purposes, how you can use um, your other indicators to help you redefine um, for a more accurate stop loss or take profit placement. So if let's say um, my sell entry is here, I want to take profit. Usually, people will tend to take profit here, correct? Uh, because previously, if I do not have all this, okay, if I do not have all this bars, okay, uh, I can do a replay, but it might be a bit messy. Okay, so my, it will be here. Right. So your take profit should be somewhere at this level, correct? But like I've mentioned, because this is a key um key, key support level, you do not want to be caught in a, a crossfire. So you want to take profit slightly before. I mean if I mean, it's great that it actually hit our take profit, but most times, as we know, it always misses. So I tend to place my take profit slightly above. Okay. So if this is the key resistance or key support area, I will put it slightly above. Okay. In both ways, it actually hit our take profit as well. Okay. So this is just an example of how 
um, I would place my take profit and stop loss in a more dynamic way. You can use indicators like your pro projection, extension, expansion. Okay. Um, what proof do, do I need to give access to a VIP room? I don't think you need any proof to assess the VIP, but you do need to be um you do need to sign up with IRNFX as a as a client, right? Okay, so thank you guys for tuning in today on a Wednesday. Um enjoy the rest of the weekend. I will see you guys in the next session. Bye.